I am back with 10 more examples of wasteful spending that we may engage in on a daily basis. Unused or forgotten food. Allowing food to spoil or go to waste due to poor meal planning or neglecting to consume leftovers can result in unnecessary expenses. This is not new, right? So look, we all do it, but we are so worried about finding the best deals in stores and sales and coupons and discounts that we miss the big picture where the real waste happened. It's right in our trash bin. You don't believe me? All right. Let's look at some numbers. 43% of food waste comes from our homes, and while eating out is an expensive adventure as is, 40% of waste comes from restaurants. American restaurant food proportions are just obscene. Try meal share, skip the appetizer, bread, butter, and salad, or eat all of these and skip the main entree, or take home the leftovers for next day lunch. Another good tip is to be mindful of food expiration dates, especially when buying in bulk from wholesalers or items with long shelf life. Check your food storage, aka pantry, door fridge for rarely used items at least once a quarter, and if you buy Buy new, move the oldest items forward, place the new ones in the back, first in, first out type of system. Excessive use of personal care products. Most of us are guilty of this, aren't we? How many body lotions do you own? I have quite a few. Or brushes, soaps, shampoos, the list goes on and on. Talk about being wasteful. To me, that's also very cluttered. We want to use up what we have and don't buy until we run out. These small things can add up. Now, the biggest trick that we fall for is impulsive buys. The latest and greatest, shiniest bottle, the magical transformation we all think will save our hair, skin, wrinkles, take off 20 years, ladies. Let's be realistic here. Let's leave the fairy dust for the fairies. The moment the new product hits our bathroom shelf, it's already old. And we tell ourselves that the next one will be better, but if we look at every single product that we own, we thought that it was the greatest each time before we bought it, didn't we? When did we learn? I'm all for experimenting and trying out new cures to old problems, but let's do it in a way that doesn't hurt our pocket. The advice that I try to follow with most products is to not open the new until I finish the old. This way, the anticipation is growing and the price will taste that much sweeter. There's less waste happening and Overall, we tend to spend less this way. Unnecessary bank fees. Incurring bank fees such as ATM withdrawal fees or overdraft charges can be avoided with careful planning and utilizing fee-free banking options. With so many banking options out there, do we still pay the bank to hold our money? No, 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 no. I need you to go online to your bank site, log in and check what fees are listed on your latest statement for every bank and every bank account that you have open. There should be no fees. And if you have them, you have to switch to a bank that is in charge. Plenty of options out there. Now in terms of cash withdrawal, the easiest way to take out money is when you pay at checkout. Use a debit card and ask for cash for groceries, for example. Usually you're limited to $50, $100 per transaction. If you need more, then you go to your local bank or if you don't have one and bank online, for example, like me, open the app on your phone and there is a locate ATM option with your GPS location. This should be your free option. I always advocate for preparation. So if you think ahead of time, then you can use these options for free without going out of your way. Don't even think about using random ATMs at theme parks, malls, restaurants, bars, places where there's high traffic and convenience. They come with hefty fees. Extra tip, always keep a 20 in your wallet and one in your car for those few times when you run to the gym 
and don't bring your wallet emergencies type of situation. I don't usually carry around cash with me, but I always keep $40 in each car in case someplace doesn't take a card in a parking, for example. Oh, and on this note, do yourself a favor and tuck in a little check in your wallet for emergencies. It has saved me countless times. Excessive use of utilities, wasting energy and water through unnecessary consumption well, can result in higher utility bills. Turning off lights when not in use, using energy efficient appliances, and conserving water can contribute to cost savings and reduce waste. We all know this, right? Well, a great tip that I recommend to lower waste on the electrical bill, this is just to save you from overpaying, is to check out the peak and non-peak times with your electrical company. Plan your household activities around non-peak times. Run the laundry loads on a night during the times when you're awake and can be there to move the clothes into the dryer at the end of the cycle, while perhaps while you watch a movie, for example. For water, I recommend using a dishwasher because it uses a lot less water than washing by hand and running the water the entire time. Want some numbers to back this up? Okay, on average we use 27 gallons of water per load when we wash by hand versus three gallons of water used by the washer. Multiply this by let's say three times a day for every meal and you just save 70 gallons of water a day. Want to maximize even more? Run your dishwasher early in the day or later at night for the most cost-effective electrical and water consumption. I know it might seem like a lot, but it's a lifestyle and you will get used to it in no time. Impulsive in-app purchases. Mobile apps and games often tempt us with in-app purchases for virtual goods or additional features. These purchases can add up quickly and become wasteful if they don't don't bring long-lasting enjoyment or value. I will do an entire video on impulse purchases. Stay tuned for that one. It's interesting how connected we are to our phones and how we react to notifications, isn't it? Practicing delayed gratification in general has a lot of benefits. I would compare these purchases to being emotional on the spot and saying the wrong things out of frustration, for example. Think about it for a minute. It, cool off and then reconsider your purchasing decision. At least now you are aware it's a big waste to your wallet. Want to know if it's impulse purchase? Remember that feeling of regret sipping through as soon as the item arrived and the joy you first felt is no longer there. Excessive vehicle usage, unnecessary driving or inefficient vehicle use can waste fuel and increase main cost. I know carpooling is not feasible for most of us. To me, the biggest waste when it comes to car usage is the size of the car. People underestimate how much car is needed for a family. I'm going to give you my own experience as an example. I use a four-door sedan for 10 years for a family of five. That's right, we were able to fit in the back seat a baby car seat and two boosters. Don't tell me you need to buy an SUV because you had a baby. Sure, you can always size up, but to me it's just wasteful and if you're trying to spend less, you can easily downsize. The cost of a bigger car is higher, the maintenance, the consumption, huge waste here. Premium cable or satellite television packages. Paying for expensive cable or satellite television packages with numerous channels that are rarely watched can result in wasteful spending. Let's look at some numbers here. The average cable package comes with 200 channels. The average viewer watches 12 channels a month. That's 6% of what you're paying for. At $100 a month, you're paying $1,200 a year for cable and only use $70 worth. Does that even make sense? 
huge waste here. Let me ask you this, with all the streaming services available, with YouTube, which has so much free content, why are you paying for cable with dozens of channels you don't watch? Why not customize your target interest and pick only what you want to watch for a lot less? Sling TV has options to choose a package of specific channels, for example, just news, if that's what you want to watch. I'm going to be honest with you. Ever since I've been on my own financially, I've never owned cable. I didn't need it. I watch DVDs for free, the latest and greatest releases from the library, and I only commit to one streaming service at a time. Currently, I have Netflix, the basic $10 one, not the $16 premium one. I watched HBO for two months, during which I canceled Netflix to take a break. I think the concept of cable TV is overpriced and outdated and a huge waste. Unplanned or excessive entertainment expensive. Overspending on concerts, movies, or events without considering the overall impact on the budget can lead to wasteful spending. Setting a budget for entertainment and seeking out free or low-cost alternatives can help manage expenses. See library movies here. Listen, I get it. We want the experience of the theater that I can understand. Just know that it's a splurge and it should be treated accordingly. That smell of fresh popcorn, the visuals, the acoustics can't be reproduced in your living room. So let's look at some ways that we can improve this price issue. Most theaters have a discount day. It used to be $5 Tuesday. So check out your local theater's website and find out what is your discount day. Option two is to visit during matinee times. Unnecessary home decor or furnishings. Continuously purchasing new home decor or furniture items without a clear need or plan can lead to wasteful spending. Do we still buy home decorations? I don't want to sound like a downer because I used to be one of those bargain hunters in discount stores like HomeGoods and TJ Maxx. I do enjoy decorations, but I just don't want to buy them anymore. I find them wasteful and high maintenance. You need to pay for them, clean them, store them, and it looks so cluttered. It's up to personal taste, I know, but over time they fade and they're not made very well to last, the affordable ones at least. So if you buy once, buy good and keep it in storage if you have room, but season after season, holiday after holiday to make it as a hobby, it's pretty wasteful. Excessive personal grooming services. Frequent salon visits for haircut, styling, or other grooming services can become costly. Exploring more affordable options like at-home grooming or stretching out salon visits can help save money. Now, I know this topic hits home because during the lockdown in 2020, I learned to cut my husband's hair with shears and we've stuck with it ever since. I had no idea what I was doing, but luckily it was a simple same size cut so many YouTube videos out there on this and what's the worst that can happen the hair will grow back it's all about practice and encouragement so invest in a pair of professional scissors from Amazon for like $30 and start practicing. My kids never use the professional salon. I cut their hair since day one and I now know how to do bangs, angles, thick hair, thin hair, curly hair. I do it all. For men to spend $30 after tip for a haircut every three weeks seems like a lot. Women, don't even get me started. <laughs> I do not understand why it costs so much for women's hair. And then you have the coloring and the processes to each their own. I personally find it wasteful for myself, but I can see how some women really need professional care. If you can get away with less, a more natural look, sometimes a good blowout and hairstyling can take it a long way. But I can't be the judge. I barely have anything to style. So I have a very 
very simple straight cut. One tip that I would like to add here is I know that social media is the drive behind a lot of trends, but before you commit to an expensive hairstyle or color, look at the long-term maintenance as well. How often do you need to come back and maintain this look before the roots take over? Are you ready to commit to the ongoing cost? If not, perhaps a simpler style is for you. Being wasteful can be avoided with small tweaks to our lifestyle. These are not complex changes, but can have a big impact on the bottom line. I hope you found these tips helpful. Share below how are you being wasteful so that we can learn from each other and cheer on the progress. I'll see you in my next video here.